You look great, Milo. Stop fussing. Uh, okay. Hey! What, <laughs> where do you find all these amazing new people? I, I, I go out in the world and look for them, and then I lure them in with fiber treats and artistic promises. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, so who do we have here? This, uh, Hi. I know you. <laughs> this is Jenny. She um, We met through... Actually, our friend Marsha, who also works here, and Jenny has been working for Serafina. She's also an artist who does ceramics and... How would you describe yourself? Ceramics and beading? I describe myself as a mixed media artist because then I don't have to follow any specific rules. There you go. <laughs> because I do work in both polymer and ceramic clay. I do sculptural pieces and jewelry. So it kind of just... That works. Gives me freedom. Yeah. Um, but... Today we want to, we're going to kind of span a, a bigger, a broad arena in that spirit of mixed media and we're going to do some wet felting, which we've done before. We're going to focus on using pre-felt. Um, today we're going to use a product that Serafina carries called Flat Mat, which is actually a, how would you describe that, Milo? It's like rescued from the byproduct of another of another industry. It, it is. And it it's, is. it's good stuff. It's very versatile. It is lovingly rescued and versatile and useful like you. It, yeah, flat. Thank you. Yeah. Flat mat is like Phil's cousin, kind of. Yes, flat mat is Phil's cousin. And we're going to do show a layout. We have other wet felting videos, so I'm not going to get too into the particulars of the met the, you know the steps of wet felting but I do think it's always helpful to see how someone likes to lay it out and um, and then we're going to Jenny's going to show us beading techniques so we have um, as a part of a fiber fairy giveaway we're doing a little packet of beads but we're going to tell you what we're using so that if it's not fiber fairy time you can get beads anytime you're watching this video and embellish what you have wet felted. So we'll be, this is, um, this is a pillow that um, Kyla made actually. She's gone on a little crazy. She's, a, she's actually the frontier person on fill and flat mat. And she started practicing wet felting and had these pillows in mind and has been making pillows. Um, I have been, this is one of, this is one of Jenny's pieces Sorry, Milo. I'm just you sticking this right in your totally face. <laughs> I'm gonna go nap. Okay, bye. <laughs> this is one of Jenny's pieces that I actually own, and um, maybe when we start to do some beading and layout, I can show some of these things close up because there's a ton of detail in there. And this is a wet felted piece with a ceramic and bead and embellishment that she repurposed this this drawer, and that is the frame, and I absolutely love it. This is a piece that, um, just a wet felted piece that I did recently. Um, been, thank you. <laughs> I've been experimenting. Um, so this tutorial is going to kind of just give you a, a launching sort of pad for the directions that you might want to go with wet felting and or beading. Um, we're also going to show, or we have an example here anyway, of wet felting um, that is made into a bag. So this wet felting, it could be a wall hanging, a pillow, a bag. Um, what else did we talk about? A uh, cover for a Kindle or an iPad, mm -hmm. something like yeah. that has that function, but then is a gorgeous piece to enjoy. Yep. And we have, um, I like to use merino or blend with merino. So any of the house carded colors, any of the merino colors, silk, silk hankies, um, dyed silk, fiber. This is the um, one of our fiber art bundles, which has locks, silk, merino. It kind of has a little bit of every texture in it in a beautiful color palette. So those are really useful. Um, we've incorporated some some sari silk. Um, I've used, can you hold that one? Mm -hmm. I've used um, hand spun and other yarns in the wet felting so it's all about color and texture and that's what I'm hoping you talk a little bit about when I demo. We also are using um, today we're using a little packet that we put together of what do we say they were six? 
The bead sizes are size 11s, size 8s, and size 6s. There are also some long teardrop beads in there as well. And they're glass beads? Yes, they're all glass seed beads, and we've, we're using a size 10 needle and a nylon beading thread. Okay, okay, so that's kind of an overview of what you could have on hand. So we are going to start with a, just a wet felting layout um, and then get into some detailed bead stitch options and demonstration for you. Are you filming? We are ready. Ready, right. ready. So today I'm using um, flat mat, and this is a merino pre-felt. And as you can see, it has some um, little bit of vegetable matter. It's not like the Rambouillet, I would say, is sort of our the the highest end that we carry. Um, then we have the natural pre-felts, which are made with Icelandic. So this is merino, and it wet felts well. I am going to tease up the fiber a little bit just helps everything grab. I'm working with about a 22 by 22 inch square. I apologize for the light. We're having some, a little bit of an electrical demon in the shop lately. <laughs> it, it's us, not you. <laughs> it's, yeah. And then I'm gonna use uh, silver merino. This is the name, the color is silver. And it's just a nice, neutral, medium value backdrop. Sometimes, and you might not be able to totally see me everywhere, sometimes it's, if I know I'm doing a picture, like when I did that hummingbird, and I can show that again later, um, I did some blacks and whites just to start to get, you know, I knew I wanted the bottom dark. And um, so instead of, all one way and all the other way. I'm doing one layer with a crisscross and you can look at it and see that it is even because if you see a little off-white then you have a little hole. And I hold my roving, grab the ends and pull and that just it's almost like a nice even paint stroke. It just gives you that nice even piece so if you were building this, we've done other wet felting tutorials where you either use batting or you lay everything out one layer one way, mm -hmm. one layer the other way, mm -hmm. but you are just kind of going at crisscrossing, zigzaggy. Yeah, and I can, yeah. Because you have your layer of mat I have that. already there. Yep. Yeah. So this is just basically to cover the pre-felt with a nice, even, neutral layer. If you really want to use every last bit of your piece that you've cut, make sure you have the ends, all the edges, uh, covered. It wants to kind of squinch in. Oh, the then merino, want the, the, the roving wants to scrunch in. Yeah, so you want to make sure you're hanging, hanging off the edge. Okay, good advice. I like to live hanging off the edge. So we are not going to show all of the wetting, gentle working. <laughs> we have several wet felting tutorials that you can see that whole process. The doodle bug, the wet felted cloak. Uh, what else do yeah, we have? Yeah, we have um, just a sort of, I think it's called like intro to wet felting where I do a Kind of like a woodland Oh yes, background. wet felting basics. Wet so you can really basics. see that this is to give you more ideas for laying it out. Depending on what you're making, art or um, a functional piece like an iPad cover or laptop case is, I'm going to go kind of quick here and do something a little bit more um, just kind of graphic and abstract. All right, so I'm all covered. Let me real quick, I'm gonna slide that towards you, mm -hmm. show a couple of different things. Wow, we're up close. So these are some pieces that Jenny made with a lot of beautiful texture and color. 
And this is kind of the direction we're going with the embellishing. How's that look, Milo? They're Can you really pretty, and at the beginning of this tutorial, there will be lots of uh, lots of pictures, images, so you okay. can really look at them up close. Okay. This is. Let's do the pillows next. This is a pillow that Kyla made. So this was um, super fun. Oh, look how well I. Ooh. <laughs> this was a super fine merino with silk. Um, do you remember if she used hankies? No hankies on that no one. Hankies. Silk fiber neps. Yep. Neps. More neps and, and beaded in and bead and silk. Silk in the center too. And silk Green in the center silk. too. Okay. Here's another one that has angora. This has a hanky and hanky. Yep. yep. And it has some angora, which it's gonna it's gonna halo a little bit. It'll it'll kind of fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. Okay, then I made some after she did. <laughs> That's you always jumping on the bandwagon. So this was my first uh, my first one, just you know stealing her white thunder. Um, I put a piece of mohair yarn, silk hanky. There's some neps. Now we're gonna confuse the camera and go dark. This was my second one. Um, just trying to make use of some of these purples that we had. Hand spun, silk. This is a um, merino yak silk mix. Or actually this is just the straight yak silk mix, the silver. Then this one, I was thinking a little bit more uh, abstract landscape. That's what happened there. <laughs> And then the hummingbird, this is why I wanted to stop for a second and show this, because if you're doing an art piece, um, how's that on the... Uh, well, it's amazing. But I mean... It looks fine. It, it looks good. good. Um, I went dark. I went with black at the bottom. I went with some grays in the middle and some white, um, super fine merino or natural white where I knew it was going to be light. That way, whatever you build on top of it is, um, is going to have that impact of what's beneath it. And should anything felt away and expose what's beneath it, it will complement it. Will complement it. Um, but this has a lot going on. I went crazy with silk, um, a fiber art bundle. The flowers are silk hankies. The leaves. Thank you, Jenny. The leaves are silk hankies. This actually was something I had already wet felted. So, I, and it, it, it felted great. It went right in there. Neps, um, yeah. So, the, the wet felting is a great, it's kind of like, oh, you like get all your stuff out and be inspired by it and use it. Don't be afraid of it. So what I'm gonna do right now is gonna be a little simpler um, cause I'm not gonna build the whole hummingbird, but we could do that one day. I mixed together these three purple merinos and made this sort of cloudy, um, cloudy purple, which I'm going to, gosh, it's a nice bat. I could even just like lay it on there. I could just like lay it on there. Bam. That's the time saver. <laughs> oh, it's got, I should leave that there. Had some like Carter remnant. All right, so now I have a purple, a purple pillow. I'm thinking pillow, cause I'm thinking I'm gonna keep it simple and. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Since I'm relatively new to wet felting and tend to dabble in more of an art piece, than a functional piece. Mm -hmm. How do you judge when you have enough fiber? You have the layer of silver and now this layer that you blended of the purples mm -hmm. and then other decorative colors are gonna go on top of that. Is there such a thing as too much? Yeah, I think so. I think you could like, I think you could, yeah, you build it up too much and it takes like a ton of water and a ton of effort to wet felt. So this is good. like. 
basically the pre-felt, a layer to cover the pre-felt, and then your pretty colors is what. And that's you know, a pretty thin bat that you put I down. Just, yeah, I just put it down. Some gray might show through there. Um, but I think it'll, it, since it's a similar value, it will all... Looks like a dandelion right now. Be okay. I've got um, a vineyard fiber art bundle that has some really pretty tones of silk in it that I want to play with on here. It kind of goes from this like silvery green to purple. You can see that. And then also, I'm looking for the neutral. The neutral in the vineyard ends up being, here, this is really pretty. Because it does have a little bit of, um, it ends up being this kind of, I know it's a little hard to see, there's like a little kind of golden color in here. And then I also have some hand spun that has a similar color palette. I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to fit that in here. You know what I should do? I should put that underneath. I should put that underneath this flower that I just started to make. Bear with me one second. The wrestling hand spun? I am. There's not a lot of wet felting jokes out there. <laughs> All right. Doo -doo -doo. I'm going to lift this up that I just laid out. This happens often when I'm like, er, rewind. <laughs> It's almost just like playing with the, so I'm kind of thinking vine and flowers is, is what I'm thinking here. That's a little, that's kind of greener than I wanted. Kind of like a brighter green. There's like some nice apricots and teals in here and purples even. It's kind of a matter of getting to them. I changed my mind. I do that sometimes. I like that better. It's subtle. It's a subtle thing. <laughs> the other one was brighter. <laughs> Is that hand spun all wool, or is there are oh there other fibers gosh, in there's it? There's silk in there. I made it a long time ago. I don't remember very well. I'm not going to use neps, but neps are um, are really pretty. Can be really pretty in this. The hand spun wants a little bit of wool. This is silk but it wants a little bit of wool to hold it down. But before I do that, I'm putting some silk on for some kind of like shine and variation. And it's really neat the way this works in. I think Kylo's pillows show it well. And the um, fiber art bundles have this um, kind of irregularity to, which I like when I'm doing something that I want to be natural and versus, I mean, if you're doing um, the dyed, solid colored dyed silk has its place too. It's just in this case, I want that soft irregularity to it. And if your silk is not fully saturated, dyed through, that's the way it's supposed to be yeah so I was gonna do like kind of like a burst but instead I think I'm going to take the hankies and just put some white flowers around so I'm gonna try and peel as thin of a layer as possible what are you laughing at the hankies are I know a challenge especially if you don't like that feeling of you know spider webs yeah and then to make a flower, it's cool because it has this edge to it. Just kind of like crinkle it up. Like that. And then I might make
make one that is a little less kind of straight on looking as if it's as if you're seeing the side of it. I'm guessing Jenny is already plotting and planning where she would bead. I am. Oh, I would bead yeah. in the center of that flower. <laughs> and I definitely need to try some silk hankies in oh. my next oh experiment. Oh my gosh, they're so fun. They just do very interesting. I'm going to make this like kind of like the biggest one. And then I'm going to use a little bit of this gray. This is a um, this is a merino silk yak mix. And what I'm thinking about is holding on the hanky, but also kind of giving it like as if there's folded petals, um, giving it a little bit of darker colors in there. And I'm gonna use some of the purple too. Oh my gosh, everything is just like <laughs> sticking and flying and So let's actually take this darker purple. Uh, let's take. Oh. <laughs> See, you need a fiber art bundle just so you can play. I know. This is some of the silk from from the fiber art bundle. I'm giving it a little center here. This is some merino. I don't know how literal I want to get, like you can kind of make it. Like a stamen. I don't even know what flower this would be. A uh, pretty one. You could use a lock to do this step. What else do we want in here? Some locks? I, I think we need some, some locks. locks. Definitely. Oh. On the locks, I like to just, they'll felt better if you just tease them apart a little bit. You want to see if there's anything in there that you think is extra fabulous? So, just kind of open the ends up a little bit, and it helps to stick them into um, into some fiber kind of so you don't tack the the curly end the locky end you don't put any fiber on top it'll stick i think it'll stick Ooh. oh my gosh that's so pretty i i'm kind of tucking it in a little bit here so it should so you don't worry about the curly end. Oh, no. It'll it won't it won't stick as well. It will it might not felt down entirely, but I'm okay with that because when I'm done, if I really want it to, I will needle felt it a little bit. Yep, it can also get some kind of beading, stitching. Yeah. So the last thing I think that I need to do is get a little bit of merino on top of this like silk and um and um, hand spun that I put down. So I used up all of my, <laughs> my whole bat. I'm stealing a little bit of it. So I'm stealing a little bit of it from the edges. Just to put in a few places. Oh jeez. Now, I have a beginner question. Okay, good. As to the silk hankies, <clears throat> right now there's a little of the, that silvery fiber that had, uh, what was in that? Was that yak? The, the yak, yak silk mix. Silk. Yeah. And then there's a little, there's, there are just small bits over the silk hankies now. Do they need anything else, any merino over them to really help them meld and meld together and felt with the main surface? There is, um some and I think 
the amount that we're doing here will be just fine. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit. So I'm putting this mid-tone purple in a few places to kind of look like a deeper, deeper part of the flower. We'll see what happens. A little bit up here. This isn't my bat, this is like a mid-tone, which is the mid-tone that I used in the bat, so it's working. It's working just fine in terms of blending. I think that should be good. I have some, um, I have some sorry silk. Um, ooh. Ooh. What do you think? How does that look through the camera? That is it's a, it's a bright pop. That's pop. It's a gorgeous compliment to that plum, that yeah, darkest purple yeah. plum tone. Let's see what happens if we try to open it up a little, make a little circle. I don't know, it might be too, might be too, too literal. I don't want it in there though. Well, I'm gonna put some in just because it's beautiful and it'll show you how it does or does not felt. Um, so far, I've done pretty well with it. And it crinkles up in a cool. It's felted really well. Yeah, it's just gonna be kind of like this weird thing going through here. Nobody knows what it is. It's your world that you're making. I need one more. I feel like I need one more. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, all right, tiny bit more wool on top of that, and we're good. And then maybe while Jenny is beating, I will be learning and wet felting at the same time <laughs> so that we can show it. Are we filming? We are on, and we are ready to bead. Oh all my right. gosh, those just, colors are so just pretty. Just bead it. This is such a fun assortment of both different sizes and different colors. It does tend to go well with my uh, favorite teal palette. <laughs> <laughs> I so, can't get away from it either. It's, it's just, it's always my go-to. Um, the, the nylon thread that is coming in this packet with the beads is a silvery gray. And we picked that color because then it's going to basically become invisible in any color that you might be working on. It'll also play well to all the beads in the mix. To get started, I've cut myself a comfortable length, which for me is about three feet. Uh, you're going to probably do a couple different threads during, depending on how heavily bead embellished your piece is gonna be. This uh, nylon thread is multi-strand, so in a classic kind of flashback to my mom doing embroidery, I am gonna lick the end of it <laughs> just to keep the fibers together. The eye on this needle is very small. So we'll see how many tries it takes me on camera. So you can get through the beads, you need a small eye. Correct. On the needle. And, and I don't know, did we mention the beads and how we were? We had a pack as part of our Fiber Fairy, but if you're seeing this, you know, in like 20, year 2020, uh, that was a while ago, so. Yes, this, the Fiber Fairy, I believe, Tier 4 for the February Fiber Fairy includes the mix of seed beads as well as a beaded needle and a spool of the thread. So it can definitely be an entry-level bead embellishment. Kit. Yes, and if you miss that boat by like two years, it's okay. Just get yourself some glass beads, a, so, a 
a, a, beading needle, needle. a beading needle and some thread. Correct. One thing that took a little bit of trial and error when I started doing beading on felt is the fact that this thread is so fine, I tie a knot in the end of this, it's going to pull right through my fibers. So my solution to that is simply to use a bead as a stopper on the end. So I have picked one of the larger beads just for the ease of showing you this and I'm going to actually tie a knot around the bead and do that again so it's you know double or square knot depending on whichever direction you go. This is going to give me an anchor on the back of my piece to prevent my thread from pulling through. Now I so have So smart. It. Just just saying some of us maybe might have beaded and struggled with that for six pillows. As I said, it took me <laughs> it took me a while to try it. Um, I've pulled the thread through the needle and given myself like a six inch tail. So just keep an eye on that when you're when you're sewing. I think the easiest thing to do, the first the first kind of bead stitch, if you will, is just to kind of sprinkle sprinkle one bead on at a time. This works especially well for these teardrop beads. So I'm simply picking up that bead. I've come up from the back of the piece. There's my bead anchor. And I'm going back down in the same spot. I'm not spanning any distance. I just want that drop bead to pop up. It gives me that little bit of sparkle. And you can do a piece with just this, having beads sprinkled around. Having done one bead stitch, I do want to have a knot on the back of the piece to keep this tension correct, to keep the bead tight to the fiber and not getting floppy. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm actually going to take a little bite of the flat mat with my needle pull slowly so I have a loop and then go through that loop to tie a knot. Let me do that one more time so it's a secure knot but also so you can see that. It's going to keep my tension correct and keep that teardrop bead in place so that it is kind of popped up as a little sprinkle. Can you do it again? I missed it. Yes. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Now, you'll notice on the back of my piece, let's pause here so I can show you the mess. I will confess my Betsy stitches on the back of this tapestry. When I was sewing both the mermaid and the silk ribbon on, I did leave these exposed because on this tapestry piece, it's going to be backed with something and framed and it won't matter. If you're doing a piece like the, like the purse I had done or a pouch for your iPad, if for whatever reason you want your stitches hidden, you can slide through the fiber, the fiber and bury your mm -hmm. stitch. So that I don't recommend stopping and starting all the time since you have that anchor bead mm -hmm. holding your knot on the back of your piece. But you can hide things and then just pop back up to the front where you want to sprinkle, put the next bead. So this is a number six bead. It's a clear glass lined in the inside with teal. So I'm simply going to go right back down in the same spot. We're so fancy. And that's going to cause that bead to kind of pop up and sit on its side. So you see the flash of that teal inside. So just stitching a bead on, it can be that simple. Now I do want to show a couple other stitches to give you some different options. And you make a knot each time. I'm taking a bite of the fiber and making a knot each time so my bead stays right with the correct it. tension. Mm -hmm. I think there's some dog hair on the back of my piece, too. What, where'd you get that cool mermaid, Jenny? This is a polymer mermaid that I made, <clears throat> excuse me, a while back and hadn't done anything with yet. Coincidentally, she is in that favorite teal palette of mine. <laughs> I found some hand-dyed silk ribbon from O2 when I lived in San Diego. So a true pack rat always has things, you know, squirreled away at home. This reminds me of the, the bronze fiber art bundle it has the brown to the, like that verdigris, the blues and greens in it. Yeah. Camera can't see me shaking my head and nodding <laughs> yes. in agreement because I do love that bronze fiber art bundle. The uh, next stitch, 
let's sprinkle that around. I think I'll come up down here in the bottom somewhere. There's going to be a variation on that simple just one stitch, but instead of one bead for this one stitch, I'm going to add three. Oh, I like that. Three at a time. That's my speed. So I've got three of this kind of lime green. I'm going to show you two stitches that each use three beads. This one, if you can see where my thread is coming up from the back of the piece, I'm going down in basically that same spot. I want these three beads to kind of yep. pop up into a little clover so that they've got a little height and a little texture on them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes seed beaters call that a pico, P-I-C-O-T. Mm, I kind lingo. of call it a little clover <laughs> because it does have those three beads like a clover leaf. I'm scattering stitches all around the bottom of this piece without really planning right now. Um, it looks like you're going along that little swoosh of blue. That's part of the fun of it. Yeah, now I'm down here in this, in this little bit of, of tan. Um, again, with three beads, let me pick three of the darker colors. I'm not showing it because I'm so zoomed, but you are just using that needle to pick them up versus picking up a bead and yes, you're just Am I? threading them on there. Yeah. That's smart. Not everyone does that either. I do like to work on a piece of fabric instead of in a dish because then they don't roll around on you. So whether this is a piece of the flat mat, it could be a dish towel from the kitchen or from the bathroom, just some kind of fabric because then your beads are going to stay put and you can also spread them out and see what you have. Mm -hmm. They won't run away in a dish. You're good right there. Okay, so I have three of this darker teal bead and I'm going to do the positioning of this stitch a little differently. I'm going to kind of lay the thread down so the beads are in a row. And I'm going to stitch down at the end of that row so that I'm oh. creating the three beads, taking up more space mm -hmm. and creating that linear element. So if, if you wanted to do, for some reason, a long row of something, you could link this. That's my next stitch. stitch. Hold on okay, to that sorry. thought. Okay. This one for just these three, mm -hmm. I do want to secure them. And this stitch is called couching. A lot of sewers and embroidery people might know that, but I've come back up alongside mm -hmm. and I'm just stitching over. Mm -hmm. So this second stitch is just, it's not going through any of the beads. Mm -hmm. It's just going to tighten the stitch, the original stitch. It's almost, down it's to the just surface. going perpendicular to the thread to, yes. the, to the first stitch. Absolutely. So I'll tie that one off. I took a class with Jenny oh, two years ago, three years ago? It was a while ago. It was ago. a while ago, yeah. and we did this, and it has all left me. So I'm hoping that um, some of it will stick this time. Okay. Now, to answer Sarah's question about doing a longer, run of beads. I'm going to, it, um, I do that with a stitch called a back stitch. So I'm going to pick up beads of different sizes and shapes and not even plan. I've picked up four beads. So I'm going to stitch those down. I'm kind of heading towards the mermaid's tail. I'm going to stitch those down just as I did with the couched stitch, but instead of going one stitch over in the opposite direction to hold it tight, I'm going to bring my needle back up alongside the beads, and I'm gonna run the needle through the last three of the four I stitched on. So now my thread is coming out of the beads and I'm prepared, I'm to in the right position the to add more. I'm going to pick up two. Stitch them down. And again, come back up through three. So this is called a back stitch. 
by picking up two beads, but then stitching back through three of them, it secures the beads of my new stitch to the beads of my previous stitch. And it keeps them, ha it keeps them in a really smooth flow on the surface of your piece. Sometimes the fun of a bead mix is not sorting your colors, but just letting it happen. Letting a little spontaneity happen. Okay. I'm not sure if the camera can see what happened here. <clears throat> my there. I was tangled up in my own loop. So that is something that can happen with this really fine thread. And in untangling myself, I did unthread the needle. <laughs> so what does this line up fancy stitch called? Not couching? Is I call it, it back stitch. Back stitch, sorry. You said that. Because you are going back through beads to secure the stitch. Hey, wow. Under pressure that and she threads pretty good. the needle. When I get to the end of a run of backstitch, I will couch down the last part so that nothing is loose or flopping around. But this, because you're doing a few beads at a time, it's very easy to do this in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. You can do this as a spiral. You can do this to really echo the movement of some of the fibers mm -hmm. in your piece. So it can be... You can change direction easily. Yes, it can be very directional. There's one last stitch that I'd like to show you, and it does involve two beads of two different sizes. Have you used um, one of the drop-shaped ones yet? I have one little drop sticking okay. out here. Okay. This stitch that was the three beads to create that kind of dimensional clover. You could put the one in the middle. Or you could do all three drops, mm, which neat. gives you more height yeah. and more texture. So you've got some, some good sizes and shapes to play with. For this last stitch, I'm picking up one of the larger beads and then looking for a small one. With bead sizes, the larger the number, the smaller the bead size. Mm. So this tiny little bead on the top here of this stack is a size 11. Mm -hmm. and believe it or not, they come smaller than that too. <laughs> so I've threaded these two, one on top of the other. The little one's on top. The little one's on top, and you can hardly see it, I know, because it's very transparent. When I take my needle back down through that stack, I'm only going down through the large bead. That small bead kind of plants on top there. It's called a stopper bead, mm -hmm. and it prevents the thread from pulling back through, holds them in place together. Mm. So that is that's what you would do if you were using any sequins. I have a stash of vintage sequins that were my mom's and grandmother's, and sometimes they're too much bling, but sometimes they're mm -hmm. just the right amount of bling. So you would use a sequin and then a stopper bead to hold that sequin stitched to your surface. I like how that's kind of following that curve. I think there's going to need to be something spirally there since this was a little plainer than I had intended yeah. when it dried. Maybe while I'm wet felting, you can do some more beading and then we can come stitch. back. Show it at the end. Can you show some of your other pieces before I zoom out just to show? I would love to. Um, this piece, I actually stitched some of the curls on because the it was a very small wet felted piece. Oh look, a few nips managed it in the mix. And this was a scrap of hand dyed silk that friends of mine had, had given me. So these candy curls are stitched on. You can see there is a vintage sequin right there, kind of a flower shaped one. The ceramic beads, I have to give a shout out to Marsha my coworker here at Serafina, because those are hers. The polymer face, again, polymer clay being one of my favorites, um, I had made a while back. And we're gonna link, if anyone's interested in the YouTube uh, video description, there will be a link to Jenny's shop. You'll see some of her pieces are available on Etsy, right? Yes. This piece is a work in progress. 
I had repaired this butterfly. The Japanese have a name for it when you repair a broken piece of pottery with gold leaf. I think it's called kintsuge because it acknowledges the break and the scar as part of life and part of your experience is part of what makes you you. So this piece is all from the Vineyard Fiber Art Bundle and it's going to need something but I don't know what yet. I did some snowballs and icicles for the winter open house here at Serafina. I think this gives you an excellent example of a large bead and the small stopper bead on the top. So it gave us some spiky texture on the icicle, but it gives you that silver sparkle of the small bead. The snowballs were from the last wet felting tutorial, which was the vessel tutorial. See, I missed that. I definitely am and a wet became, felting novice. And it became snowmen or these snowballs or pumpkins was what it was. So this had sequins and silver beads. And this had some directional backstitched. Here, bring it down like, yes, right there. So some larger beads sprinkled around, but then some directional pieces with the backstitching. And then let's see the... Uh fox that's finished to give people an idea how far you how can. yeah well yeah I have a tendency to bead everything and anything <laughs> um, so this little felted piece got a serious kind of composition out of beads there are flower shaped beads there's a ceramic leaf there are drops there are different flowers and then a few things sprinkled around in the field as well. It has some enameled copper, and then it has a uh, quote stamped in copper as well. <clears throat> so whether you decide to use beads and sprinkle them around as just a small subtle accent, or whether you really fall in love and kind of go for the gusto, there's so many options. So cool. All right. I'm ready if you're ready. Wow. Hold on, I gotta bring my gotta bring my beads in. I'm just covered in fuzz. You're just filming the back of my head. I have your earrings, <laughs> your bracelet. <laughs> Alright, let me tie this one off. I'm doing a lot of the little clovery three. A little clump. A little clump, yeah, and I just sort of went. It's helping hold the silk on as well as I liked the way Jenny had this stitch to make the ribbon do fun things. Jenny um, did some beading on there. Yes, hold on. I'll, I'm going to get this oh, out of okay. the way and then we can. And then I can well, we want to look at yours too. It's so we'll do pretty. Them. I forgot to knot for a while there, but now I got it. Don't knot knot. Don't knot okay. knot. So th I don't remember how we had this oriented when I laid it out. Maybe like that? Uh, maybe. I think so. <laughs> so that's how it's looking. So pretty. I'm pretty happy with it. These didn't quite do what I wanted with the darker spots, but now that I've now that I'm over that it wasn't what I intended. No, it's really pretty. <laughs> I, like the way, yeah. I like the way that it looks. The ends of the lock stayed loose, which is kind of fun, but they're felted on there really well. The yarn is all really good. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fun. It's kind of crazy. And then let me slide in. Jenny's been beating. Is that a good, yep. Is that a good placement? So we've got some scattered ones. What do you, is there anything you want to say, Jenny? I wanted that swirl on the very top to have, you know, some direction and composition yeah. since there was a lot of uh, fluid curves on the bottom half yeah. of the piece. And I did put, sprinkle a few beads on top of the ribbon just to cover up the stitches where the ribbon was tacked down. Mm -hmm. I don't, they weren't necessary, but I, I of like course, it. like more beads. Yeah. yeah Thank I you. Like and this had, there was a lot of space up here. So yes. put in that. <clears throat> so fun. Okay. 
when I was, we've been using this um, flat mat as a, as a base, and I think it's the same is true with pre-felt. It takes a lot of water to get it all wet all the way to the edges. So I just keep using the sprinkler, keep using the sprinkler. We sell the, um, the wet felting kit. We sell, I don't have it sitting here in front of me, but the, um, the sprinklers that give you a nice real even um, flow with your water and coverage and then the um, olive oil soap in lavender and unscented for wet felting. So hopefully this was inspiring as well as some useful information. Yep. And hopefully we have what you need to get started and um, you can make something pretty and put pictures on Serafina Felting Fanfare, which is our Facebook group. We love to see what everybody's making. People are going to go wild. <laughs> I hope they do it. Thank you for being here, Jenny, and My for pleasure. contributing. Um, Jenny's um, Etsy, you have an Etsy shop, right? Yes. Is It's J Davies Razor, and I believe the link will be underneath in the It'll be in info. the YouTube comments. Yep. Okay. okay. In the YouTube description. In the description. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Okay. Bye. See ya.